there's this great dialogue in one of the um, uh, Buddhist scriptures where, where someone's asking the Buddha about a bodhisattva, you know, and a bodhisattva. A bodhisattva is actually um, the Buddhist mythic representation of this experience of, of, of redemption, of the redeeming presence. The, that's what the bodhisattva really actually is. It's somebody experiencing the redeeming presence of being, wondering how do I communicate that? How do I get it across? And somehow the image and the idea of the bodhisattva arose. The bodhisattva is a Buddhist idea of a Christ, actually. Not an exclusive one, like there's only one, but it's like throwing down a responsibility at the feet of human beings, especially spiritual human beings, and basically saying to be a bodhisattva is the aim of all this in a certain sense. And after the Buddha starts, give this long description of a bodhisattva, how selfless and compassionate and loving and redeeming and, you know, all this stuff, which if you're not careful, your little spiritual ego could just get... <laughs> Well, yes, I will become that. Yes, that's great. And you have this, you, just about the time you could fabricate this big, boring catastrophe of a spiritual ego. Right at the end of that, the Buddha comes by very nicely, but also with uh, uh, <laughs> a bit of uh, directness. And it's like takes out a pin and just pops the bubble. And he does that by saying, and if the bodhisattva, if a bodhisattva thinks there are sentient beings who need to be saved by a bodhisattva. That bodhisattva is not a bodhisattva at all. So he created this whole thing that the spiritual ego just would love to just wrap its arms around like, I am going to be a redeeming presence and comes up and says, if you see it that way, boom, it's egoic. Because of course the greatest bodhisattvas have no consciousness of being bodhisattvas. They don't see themselves as bodhisattvas at all. And yet, and yet, the work of redemption continues in human beings, even if that's too religious a sounding of a word for some people, nonetheless, that's what people are looking for in a myriad ways. Maybe they think they're gonna be redeemed by God, maybe they think they're gonna be redeemed by owning a nice Ferrari in their garage, but either way, they're looking for wholeness. And so that's where our our own realization, whatever it may be, to whatever degree it may be, is a great gift and a grace. And it's also, I think, if it's seen in its truest light, it's also a recognition of a kind of responsibility. Somehow I need to pick this up and in my limited, fragile, imperfect human way to embody the grace that's been given to me and shown me. And even though we can recognize our already and always redeemed condition of wholeness and completeness as a human being, as a human being, even Buddhas and Bodhisattvas as human beings are always growing into their realization. Because there is no end of embodying the infinite. Otherwise, it wouldn't be infinite. Right? So nobody gets to, no egos get to pass a, a theoretical line in the sand and said, that's it. I'm the perfectly enlightened being, right? That's the catastrophe that the Buddha was trying to pop the balloon bubble on it, right at the end of his depiction of what a bodhisattva is. As human beings, we're always either growing into or away from our true nature. And we're always, in that sense, we're always in a state of becoming. The difference is the becoming then isn't a search for completeness. If you've already found the completeness, it's always there. The becoming is the capacity to always embody that completeness more clearly, more compassionately, more wisely, more fully, without end. And that's one of the reasons why I said 
And I do think that most of the people, all the people that I've seen in my life that seem to really live in a deep state of realization in some way, they are also resting in the always an already state of completeness and always as human beings becoming. And they're not clutching to either one. They're not making final claims of arrival. They're just getting on with the business of always being and always becoming. And the more we do that without being conscious of it, without necessarily even trying to do it, we become redeeming presences in the world in some manner. Because, of course, we are the world, right? So in the end, we're really redeeming ourselves anyway. <laughs>